What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode. Coach Joe here with Heartletics.com. And a few short weeks ago, I it was my birthday. I turned 32 years old. And what I figured is just that with the amount of new audience that is, you know, either watching this on YouTube or maybe listening on Spotify. And I actually sent this over to my email list, which has blown, completely just blown up since a few of our, you know, workout videos have went viral, I'd like to say, you know, which is great. You know, more people we get to speak to, more people that we get to share more about Heartletics with. And in case you guys are tuning in for the very first time and you don't know too much about Heartletics or who I am, I guess let me quickly introduce myself before we dive into today's topic. My name is Coach Joe. AK Joe Calari, I guess if you want to call me that, my real name. <laughs> and um, since 2017, I've been helping guys, you know, specifically lose fat and build muscle, but it's a lot more than that. That's just the physical transformation. That's just the icy on the cake. We are all about the mindset. We're all about helping our members, you know, develop more discipline, develop more confidence, just learning how to become a better leader, especially in today's society where, you know, as men, we need to focus on that the most, right? We need to fill up our cups. We need to pour more on others. We need to establish, you know, how we can become a better leader, how we can become a better role model. So that's what we do inside of our coaching program. And I'm blessed. I've been, you know, helping out thousands of guys since 2017. It's been a lot of fun. Okay. Now backtrack, right? In case you really don't know anything about me and why I got started with health and fitness. And I'll give you the 30 second, you know, elevator pitch right here. You know, I grew up in an Italian household, love my parents to death. Right. But it was the finish everything on your plate mentality. It was the good foods versus the bad foods. And that led to a, you know, minor slightly, right. Uh, binge eating disorder. And I was pretty much fat, got made fun of, got bullied in, you know, uh, elementary school, got bullied in middle school before I decided to actually make a change about it. In fact, like I, it haunts me to this day, but regardless, it's the reason why I have six back abs now is <laughs> because this girl in middle school, she took a, a candy bar. It was called a chunky bar. In case you guys don't know what that is, it's like a Nestle chunky bar. Look it up. You'll see exactly what it is. It's like chocolate, raisins, some nuts or something like that. Anyways, she whipped it right at me, hit me in the side of the face right there at lunch. And she's like, Hey, this has your name on it, fatty. And it was just like the running joke where everybody just laughed at me. And I went home crying on my mom's shoulder. It was horrible. Right? So since that traumatic experience, right? I made it my mission to say, okay, I'm never going to let that happen to me again because I was very, very painful. <laughs> so I've been on my health and fitness journey, I like to say. And, you know, uh, fast forward throughout the years, you know, all the way up through high school, I tried several different diets. Nothing seemed to really work for me. Nothing was sustainable. I love to have my donuts. I love to have, you know, my brownies, my cookies. I have a sweet tooth, you know? And so with all these diets out there, it was never actually getting the results that I wanted. It wasn't until I got certified in training nutrition and strength and conditioning when I realized here like, man, this is not so complicated. This is not so hard. And that's what we do at Heartletics. We simplify fat loss, right? We simplify helping our members lose fat, build muscle, right? Become the best version of themselves, but most importantly, learn how to create sustainable habits. Now, with that being said, I want to dive in once again to three things that is going to completely change your life. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because it's kind of like a birthday present. I guess I should say, uh, uh, even though my birthday passed several weeks ago, it's kind of like a gift to you guys, you know, in case you don't know anything about me and in case you're like, okay, Hey, I'm just kind of feeling stuck right now. And maybe this is you that's listening right now. You're kind of stuck in a rut. You feel like it's Groundhog's Day all over again. You're, you're trying to improve on your health. You're trying to improve your mindset. And you're just like kind of just in this la-la land, right? Kind of swamped with just like this day in, day out type of emotions. And you're looking for an escape. You're looking for something that's going to help you out. Well, guess what? These three things are definitely going to help you out. And it's not just physically based. But once again, it's mentally, emotionally, spiritually based as well, because that's what we believe in inside of our coaching program at Heartletics is helping our members fill up all of their cups and become the best versions of themselves. And that's the four pillars of well-being, the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. So with that being said, here are three things that, in my opinion, can change your life. And in fact, 
since I am a coach, right? A coach is always going to tell you what you need to hear. And a cheerleader is what, you know, people are going to tell you what you want to hear. And that's why, you know, guys lack discipline. Guys, you know, lack support. Guys lack, you know, consistency is because they don't have anybody in their corner holding them accountable. They don't have anybody coaching them and telling them what they need to hear. So I'm actually going to give you some challenges, right? There are going to be three challenges here that I promise you, if you do these challenges, you are going to feel 10 times better. You're probably going to look 10 times better also, okay? So the first thing that I want to dive into in terms of three things that you should know about me, right? In terms of all my, you know, 32 years of life here on earth, you know, is that for starters, like relationships matter the most. And, you know, probably about 10, five two even years ago, I would have never even thought about putting that on my list about how relationships matter the most. But like, if you think about it, you know, maybe you're a dad, maybe you're a mom, maybe, you know, you're a a brother, a sister, whatever the case may be, right? You have coworkers, you have friends, you have family members, but relationships matter the most. And it's not just the simple fact of like social interactions with people and how you don't want to be just like an introvert just sitting in the room all day, like how you need to be out, right? That's social, right? That's, it also helps. But here's exactly how it helps. Two reasons, right? For starters, like think about how great it is. And it says this even in the Bible, right? Uh, Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. So think about just how powerful the relationships that you have. In fact, I forget who said it, but I'm sure you've heard this plenty of times, but it's like your network is your net worth. And there's a lot of facts to that. <clears throat> Jim Rome actually said that you become the sum of the five people that you surround yourself with the most. And so as I'm progressing now, right, in my early 30s and as you know, a husband, as a father, as a business owner, right, uh, as a member of my church that's trying to, once again, be a better leader, be a better disciple and just help out more, I really take ownership over relationships because I realize here that you can learn so much from having other people in your corner and can fast track your success also. You know, I I think there's another quote out there that I'm sure you heard. It's not about what you know, it's about who you know. And so relationships can just help you grow 10 times more, you know? And so having these relationships, they hold a lot of truth, but also, right? On the other side of perspective, when it comes to the reason why relationships matter the most, it's the simple fact of getting things off your chest. So way back in the day, right? When I was about 22 years old, I struggled a lot with depression, uh, suicidal thoughts, really, really dark place in my life after a horrible toxic relationship that I was in. And I felt like just, there was nothing going on in my life, nothing worth living for, honestly, you know? And uh, during that hardship, I can really say this, that, you know, just like the relationships that you have isn't always just about the relationships with others, but it's also about the relationship that we have with yourself. You see, I was in a dark place in my life because I really didn't love who I was. You know, I was just like doing things to be a people pleaser rather than doing things that I actually wanted. I really didn't like myself, but I had to go through all that trial and error. I had to go through the suicidal thoughts and depression to actually learn that about myself. But here's another reason why relationships are so powerful. It's just because, you know, if I had people in my corner that I fully trusted, I knew that they loved me without a doubt, right? I'm not saying that I don't. I'm just, you know, for clarity on this, it would make my life a lot easier in that dark patch by just venting and getting things off my chest. And this is why the community group that we have inside of our coaching program at Heartletics is hold true to the reason why our members are successful, You know, it's like, hey, every dog has its day. You might be going through a hard time at work. You might be going through a hard time, you know, maybe uh, at home with stress. Maybe something's going on, you know, with your your spouse, your partner, whatever the case may be, where it's just like, you want somebody to talk to. You want somebody to vent to. You want somebody to, you know, listen to. And if we actually look up any of the stats, you know, men's mental health, it's like a crisis right now. Like, I mean, it's just, it's bad. And I think that's because guys try to be, you know, this type of character where they hold everything in. They don't want to be vulnerable. They don't want to express their emotions. And that's why I have no problem at all. Hey, waving my white flag, putting the ego, putting the pride aside and being the first one to do so. Because I understand like when you're literally at the end of, you know, potentially your life, you know, in the deepest, darkest pits of hell, you know, it's one of these things where you stop caring about what other people think about you. Okay, so that's number one. The first thing I want you to know, right? 
in terms of this whole entire presentation, this podcast, is that relationships matter the most. Now, here's your challenge. Because once again, I want to give you three specific challenges based on all three of these different key points, right? Your challenge is to call up a family member or maybe a friend or somebody that you haven't spoke to in maybe a long time, maybe since high school, maybe since college, whatever the case may be, and just give them a quick call. Don't shoot them over a text, right? Like, let's be men here. Let's step outside of our comfort zone. I know it's a lot easier to text somebody rather than to call somebody. Call them up right? And just tell them, you know, what they have done for you in your life. Maybe it was like an old school memory that you guys had and, you know, it made you just laugh or chuckle, whatever the case may be. Give them a call, right? And just like literally just talk to them. That's it. It doesn't have to be a long conversation. Make it short if you want, five, 10 minutes, whatever the case may be. But just call somebody, right? A family member, a friend, a loved one, somebody back in the day when you went to school and just tell them about how, Like you had this effect on them and how maybe you're just grateful and appreciated over the relationship that you guys have. Okay. So that's the first challenge. And hopefully, right. You guys can actually do that. I I'll be very shocked. In fact, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, I would love to know in the comment section below, if you guys were actually able to complete some of these challenges, because it's tough, right? Like these challenges are not easy by any means. It's going to make you think, but once again, this is why I'm a coach, Joe, I'm not a cheerleader, Joe. I'm going to push you. I'm going to challenge you. You want to become the best version of yourself? Well, hey, welcome to Heartletics, baby. This is what we do. Now, the key thing, number two that I want to talk about is that fail means first act in learning. I have failed so many times in my life. In fact, right, thinking all the way back, I think this was in second grade or third grade, I couldn't say the word yellow, right? Yellow. I could not say that word to save my life. And so I had to go to speech class and I'm sure there was other words that I couldn't say, but I just remember my speech instructor always saying like, yellow, yell, lel, oh. And I'm just like, dude, shut up. (laughs) I'll get it down one of these days. But, um, I go to speech class, right? Not only that, but I had to go to Sylvan Learning Center, right? I had a horrible time in school. I filled so many classes, filled classes, even in college, like horrible time in school. And that's because, you know, I struggled with reading comprehension and also test anxiety. Now, fast forward, because I never even wanted to go to college, I always wanted to be in the Marines. That's all I wanted to become was a U.S. Marine, right? 0311 Infantry, that's what I wanted to do. I did the, I signed up for delayed uh, um, delayed uh, entry program. I, you know, went through PT on, you know, Saturdays when I was still in high school, just to kind of train with the guys over at the Marine, um, or excuse me, the uh, recruiting center that we have in our local city. Like I was fully involved and guess what, right? Like right after high school, I failed my ASVAB test. Not once, not twice, but three times. Like just imagine like you never want to go to college because you're like, hey, I just want to fight for my country. That's all I want to do since 9-11 happened was just fight for our country. I want to save people, right? I want to make an impact, right? And so it's just like you have these dreams of becoming a Marine and then you literally fail by like three points, And I'm like, oh, geez. So I had to wait like four or five months later, retake it. And guess what? Failed again by just a few short points. Because like I said, I struggled my whole entire life with, you know, test anxiety, reading comprehension, the whole nine yards. And then I take that ASVAB test again and I fail it again. You know, at that point in my life, I'm like, dude, what is going on with me? (laughs) I'm nothing but a failure, right? But it's funny because it just makes me put more faith and trust and belief in God. Because I understand that, hey, at the end of the day, like it's maybe wasn't in my plans. Maybe it was in God's plans, right? For me to become a business owner, for me to, you know, be doing what I'm doing exactly right now to have a, you know, different kind of impact than what I wanted, right? I need to learn how to just trust and believe in the Lord's will for me, not my own understanding, okay? So the reason why I'm sharing this with all you guys is because a lot of you guys are holding a lot of baggage, right? Like how I was, because maybe you don't work on your mindset. Maybe you don't work on your emotions, right? But so what you need to understand is how to literally let go. And in fact, how to only look into the rear view mirror of your life as stepping stones to success that can really help you overcome your current challenges right now, or to just put some fuel to the fire. You know, like every time I'm like, oh man, things are not going my way right now in my business. I'm looking back. I'm like, yeah, but like, look at everything else I've already, you know, struggled with and already failed at. Like, do we just going to stop now? It's like, no, we're going to continue to push through. 
We're not going to be defined by our past and we're not going to let that, you know, put up a poster of where we're trying to get to in the future. Just because there was a failure in the past doesn't mean there needs to be a failure in the future. So it's like I use that, right, that pain to push me, right, to greatness. You know, I use that to kind of fuel me and motivate me. So what I want you guys to do is actually take out a piece of paper or if you're feeling ballsy enough, right, leave a comment down below and just take a moment and think about your past failures. You know, for starters, it's probably going to be hard for you to get some of this stuff off your chest. Maybe you're not vulnerable or open or anything like that. So that might be actually a huge step outside your comfort zone. But I really want you to just look at that challenge or, you know, that thing that you had to go through, that failure, that struggle that you went through in your life. And I want you to actually see, and this is where the lens of having a different perspective on things matters the most. Remember, you can look at the glass being half full or like at the glass being half empty. It's all a perspective shift. And with some of our members to help them on their fat loss journey and help them with having more confidence, it's giving them a different perspective. So take note of this, right? Write down those failures, write them down on a piece of paper and just ask yourself this, was it actually a blessing in disguise? Those failures might not be failures anymore just by asking yourself that question. Was it actually a blessing in disguise? I can say that everything that I struggled with and went through, right, got me to exactly where I want to be and that's right here in my life. So what I thought was a failure was actually a blessing in disguise. So that's your challenge, write that down. Let's go to the third and final thing that I want you guys to know about me. And once again, this is only to help you. This is only to inspire you. This is only to motivate you to become the best version of yourself. Remember, it's not just physically, it's mentally as well. And this is to always, capital A-L-W-A-Y-S, always fill up your cup. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you heard this before. If you have an empty cup, how can you even expect to pour more out into others? You can't. You know, and so like, what does filling up your cup actually mean? Well, remember, there's four pillars of well-being, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And it doesn't matter if, hey, one day you're only filling up like 1% here and maybe like 0.3% here. It doesn't matter. You're still filling up your cup. Some of you guys, the reason why you're feeling stuck right now and the reason why you're feeling like uh, Groundhog's Day all over and over again. It's because you don't have any goals. You don't have clarity of where you're trying to get to. And most importantly, like you lack the motivation. You lack the ambition to actually do something. And you don't know how great it is to actually do something and to fill up your cup. You probably haven't experienced that in years. And the minute you start embracing personal development, the minute you start embracing becoming the best version of yourself physically and mentally, guess what? Like that becomes a lot of fun. It really does because you can look back and you can say like, man, like I used to view these as challenges. Now I view these as opportunities because I leveled up mentally, man, walking up and down the stairs, right? Like used to be painful on my knees and I used to <gasps> suck in my gut and just, you know, to tie my shoes and put on my, you know, pants and, you know, tighten up my belt to get ready for work, right? Hey, that's not a struggle anymore. I'm leveling it up physically. And so when you fill up your cup, what's so amazing about this is that you are not becoming the best version of yourself solo dolo. You're also helping others become the best versions of themselves. You're literally becoming that lighthouse, right? And here's the reason why I use that metaphor a lot, the lighthouse, is because a lighthouse doesn't have any sound. It doesn't have a horn. It doesn't have any bells or whistles. It is a lighthouse, which means when somebody's on a boat, right, and they don't know how to get to land, they don't know how to get to safety, they see that lighthouse. They don't hear that lighthouse. So if you're a fat dad telling your kids to start eating vegetables, I recommend stop being the horn and start being the light. Start actually eating the vegetables. If you're yelling at your kids to get off their tablets and stop watching YouTube and TV so much, hey, I recommend you do exactly the same, right? Get off the couch with your beer and your Cheetos, all right? Stop watching Netflix. Go for a walk with your kids. And so when you fill up your cup, guess what? Your kids are literally seen, right? And the apple does not fall far from the tree. Let's keep that in mind, right? Monkey see, monkey do. Your kids are literally gonna be falling through in your footsteps. And if you're somebody that's right now, right? And you maybe you are stuck in a rut because you're like, Joe, I've tried everything. I've tried keto, I've tried carnivore, I've tried intermittent fasting, I've tried Weight Watchers. Guess what? Keep on trying, right? Find a plan that's actually personalized for you. That's actually going to get you the results that you're looking for. And it's sustainable for your lifestyle. It ain't that hard, 
right? If thousands of other guys that we coach at Heartletics can do it, you can do it too, right? This ain't that this ain't that difficult, okay? It ain't rocket science here. But what you need to do, right, is focus, right, on building yourself up and filling up your cup each and every single day. And here's what I recommend. Honestly, this is like a complete game changer. And when I started doing this years ago, it made my life so much easier. When it comes to staying lean around 10, 12% body fat all year round, when it comes to having confidence, when it comes to you know having more discipline, when it comes to staying more consistent, it all boiled around against this one thing that I do, that I recommend you guys do as well. And it's called having a morning routine. A morning routine does not have to be long by any means. It does not have to be two, three hours, nothing like that. Break it down into, okay, if there's four pillars here, right? Spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. How can I devote maybe like 15 minutes here, 15 minutes here, 15 minutes here, 15 minutes here? You can do that, right? There's nothing wrong with that at all. Maybe that's like reading. Maybe that's reading the Bible. Maybe that's praying. Maybe that's saying some affirmations. Maybe that's meditation. Maybe that's journaling and writing down the things that you're grateful for. Maybe that's going for a walk or maybe doing some push-ups or sit-ups, you know, right there. But I promise you anything, if you just started doing that, filling up your cup each and every day, your life will change so fast, right? And most importantly is like, you're not gonna look in the future. Like some of you guys right now that's struggling with your health, struggling with your goals, stop what you're doing and just ask yourself this. If nothing changes, where am I going to be at in the next 10, 15, 20 years? Albert Einstein said it best. The definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results. So it's let's just say, right, you've already been struggling for 10 years. You're out of shape, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, type 2 diabetes, you lack motivation, you're lazy, you lack the discipline, okay? Let's fast forward, right? It's already been 10 years of that. Where are you going to be in another 10 years? Because I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but like there's never going to be a magic fat loss pill that takes away all your pain. Your blood pressure medications and cholesterol medications are never going to actually heal you of the symptoms. It's nothing more than a band-aid to the gunshot wound. And you can go ahead and try to get weight loss surgery, but if you don't change your habits, like what got you to be in this position is what's gonna eventually get you there again. So until you learn how to make that change internally, guess what? It's always gonna be a struggle for you. So now if you can fast forward 10, 15, 20 years and realize, man, I'm gonna be even more in pain, even more low sex drive, even more lacking confidence, even you know bigger, right? My joints hurt even more, right? Like it's just harder of a life. You have my full permission to start making a change today. And it doesn't have to be hard by any means. It's just about walking in the right direction of towards your goals and not giving up. That's it. Like, honestly, you want to be successful at your goals? Just don't give up. Whatever you do, do and continue to do until you see it all the way through, right? That's how you're going to be successful. And if you're somebody right now that let's say you're once again, struggling on your health and fitness goals. Well, hey, you know, you can watch this on YouTube, click on the link down below. We have a completely free training guide going over a three-step framework on how we help out our members with the right nutrition plan, the right training plan, and the right mindset to reach their goals. And it's gonna give you a step-by-step plan to follow. So if you want access to that and you're watching this on YouTube, just click on the first link in the description box. But here's your challenge, right? Your challenge is that every single day, I want you to do something that's in alignment with your goals, okay? And I don't wanna tell you what to do. I don't wanna say, hey, have this morning routine, do it all like this, no. I want you to get creative. I want you to put your thinking cap on and say, okay, hey, if Coach Joe here, right, can eat donuts and stay 10% body fat all year round, I can do it too, because you can. And I want you to kind of figure out, okay, like, hey, what is the physical thing? Or what is the mindset thing? Or what is the emotional or the spiritual? What is the thing that's going to just help you fill up your cup? And in any of those pillars, right? doesn't matter which one you decide to do for that day or, hey, you want to fill up in multiple pillars for that day. It doesn't really matter. But as long as you're not going backwards, as long as you're always focusing on progression, remember, uh, progression over perfection, okay? Keep that in mind. Consistency over intensity. Some of you guys out there, you treat like, every single every single Monday or every single new month or whatever the case may be is like that New Year's Eve, right? Or New Year's goal type of resolution where, hey, you're gonna sign up for the gym membership. You're gonna go, you know, seven days straight. You're gonna work two hours every single day. But what happens, right? That doesn't work for anybody. That's why by March, they fall off the wagon. I don't want you to fall off the wagon. 
right? So keep this in mind, like you do not need to go, you know, diving in, you know, head first into all this and, you know, dedicate three hours to, you know, working out first thing in the morning. Listen, don't bite off too much that you can chew. Start off small. My recommendation is this, is give yourself a step goal and give yourself a nutritional goal. Whether that is like your calories that you're tracking and you want to make sure that you're staying in the deficit to lose fat or whether it's hitting your macros, like that's it. And if you don't you know, need any help on that because maybe you don't know what any of that information is, then yeah, for sure, definitely click on the link down below and take a look at that three-step framework. So that way you can at least educate yourself and knowing how to just improve on your health. But that's it, right? Three challenges and I'll just recap them one more time, right? The first challenge that I have for you is call up a family member, call up a friend, call up a loved one, somebody you haven't talked to in quite some time, and just tell them how grateful, right, uh, you are to have them in their lives, and hey, you're just thinking about them. That's it, right? It will make their day. Don't text them, call them, okay? The second challenge, this is where you wanna make sure that you're writing down, right, what are your past failures? And look at them for what they are. The glass being half full, rather than the glass being half empty, and just say, ask yourself this, were these failures of mine was it actually a blessing in disguise? You know, like I bet you anything, a lot of those failed attempts that you had, it's what made you to the person who you are today. And if we're really taking a bigger picture of all this, we need to be grateful for that, right? And then lastly, it's just say, hey, start filling up your cup. You know, spend some time, you know, whether that's working out, going for a walk, spend some time journaling, reading the Bible and prayer, whatever the case may be. But focus on always filling up your cup. And so what I want you to do is start taking action. And once again, sometimes when you focus on physical action, it leads to having a better mindset, right? Because, hey, when you look good, you feel good. When you feel good, you do good type deal, right? So it's just like when you get your body moving, the mind also follows. So start either tracking your steps or giving yourself a push-up goal or maybe like a calorie goal that you want to focus on or a macro target, something like that. But start doing that today. Because once again, if you had to fast track 10 years in the future and you can see yourself in a worse position or worse, right? Like your kids are falling through and their health is now on the line because you didn't take action. You didn't level up. You didn't decide to become a leader, right? You are more of a liability rather than an asset. Then start taking that action to make that change today. And remember, it doesn't have to be hard by any means. So hopefully you guys got a lot of value from today's podcast and hopefully, fingers crossed, you decide to do these challenges that I gave you. And if you are able to accomplish them, would love to know your thoughts, feedback, and just leave a comment uh, you know, down below letting me know about that. And if you guys did enjoy today's episode, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not yet already. And as always, guys, this has been Coach Joe with Heartletics.com, and I will talk to you in the next episode. Peace out, Girl Scouts.